Do you feel like you don't quite understand how men are ever falling in love if they ever do? Is the confusion leaving you frozen in place, not understanding what you should even be doing? A lot of what you've heard about how men fall in love is actually untrue, which is why you've been so confused. So today we'll discuss the five biggest lies about how men fall in love so that you can know exactly how to get the man you want. Let's start with looks. One of the big misconceptions, everything is predicated on looks, that you go in with the mindset that, oh, if I don't look as good as her, I don't deserve the same quality of men. I, it won't be possible for me to be able to have men do anything for me, crawl on grass and sniff my butthole like all these other girls have these guys worshiping them. Looks is like a gateway drug, okay? Because it is what allows him to even allow himself to begin the process of falling in love with you. What do I mean by that? For example, if I see you, let's just say at a work event, I don't want to use party. Let's just say it's a work event. Okay. So both of you guys are there for work and he sees you. He's like, oh my goodness. She doesn't work in my building, but this is like a whole big staff party for all the different units around the city. And you know, she, she's not, you know, going to be in my workplace, but who is that? And he just walks up to you. He's like, sorry, I just had to get to know who you are. I've never seen you around before. Uh, and you're just absolutely stunning. Okay. And let's say you guys go out on a couple dates, you get to know each other more, you guys realize you, you guys share some stuff in common, maybe you both like skiing, you go on a couple ski trips, bada bing, bada boom, you guys are in a full blown relationship. Now, you were a great person, you were a great personality, you had a great, great character traits, you were just waiting to be discovered, you were like a diamond in the rough. However, he didn't know that, so he didn't care about that until he saw your viciously voluptuous dump truck. He didn't know or care about that until he saw your vicious, viciously voluptuous yiddies. Before he got to know you and know how amazing you are and understand you better and see all the amazing aspects of who you are, the first thing that led him to be open to getting to know you and all those amazing, amazing qualities about you is his physical attraction to you. Secondly, we have that love is all transactional because it kind of just feels like well they just want these specific things from me and so if i do these specific things then i receive this from them but then that feels a lot like a transaction it doesn't feel like true genuine love i want us to come to an understanding about what true genuine love is i want you to ask yourself the people in my life that i've had as romantic partners did i choose those people because of how i serve them or did I first choose those people because, or that man in this case, because of how he serves me? I know natural to some of you, you, you might first, the first thing that might come to your mind is, well, I chose that person because of how I serve them. It's really about them. How come you don't love every single human being that walks by you the same intensity and passion that you love your romantic partners. If it's really about how generous you are in the love that you give, why don't you just love everyone as passionately as you do your romantic partner? And then this is the thing. When I say transactional, a lot of people are thinking, oh, okay, so the men want Squirtle and then the, the, the girls, all they want is money. And that's the transaction. When in reality, the transactional element is a lot more than just money and squirtle, right? There can be a transactional element in the relationship as it relates to the energy you exchange. There can be a transactional uh, relationship as it relates to uh, the emotions you exchange, how you support each other, how what you uh, do for each other uh, spiritually, even in a negative fashion okay because for some of you you're probably thinking well you know uh i gave my all to this guy and he all he did was neglect me treat me horrible treat me like garbage so it really wasn't him serving me at all it was me serving him 24 7. even the aspect of being in a relationship that you can obsess over spend all your time attention and energy on serves you why because when you don't have that person or that, or that relationship to spend all your time and energy on, you feel quite bored. 
with life. You feel like life is quite uninteresting, which is why some of you end up staying in a toxic relationship longer than you need to or might still be in one because you actually get something from having a relationship that you can concentrate all your energy on. Number three is peace. I don't know how many times I've heard guys say, and I've said it myself, I'm not better than anyone. The only thing I care about is having peace and quiet in my relationship. I just want to grow that will bring me peace. Be my peace. Now, I'm not going to tell you that that's untrue because it is partially true. But I want you to understand that men aren't falling in love with peace. And the misconception and the, and the lie you've been told is that peace equals being quiet, right? Being submissive is just not having opinions, not speaking up, just allow everything to pass, that you will be as easygoing and easy to get along with as possible. Truthfully and honestly, Men are head over heels in love with the girls that are constantly focused on how to be the most agreeable. Don't get yourself confused that you think your ability to be more agreeable will make it easier for men to fall in love with you. It will not. A lot of times when you guys become so obsessed with peace, thinking that, oh, but the men all want peace, the men all want peace, that you also don't even do the job of speaking up for yourself when he disrespects you, when he crosses your boundary, when he mistreats you, because you're so focused on, well, I, I want to be as peaceful as possible, that he won't not like me. I want to be as peaceful as possible because that's how he's going to fall in love with me. I want to be as peaceful as possible because that's what's going to make me the most desired. No, because truthfully, they want to respect the women that they actually desire and want. Don't be so obsessed with the idea that men want peace that you don't ever speak up for yourself, stand up for yourself, let him know where he messed up. Number four is being likable. And I tell you the truth, men like mean girls. Imagine me, I came up to you on the street and I'm like, look, I'm juggling 10 balls in a row while I set myself on fire. Don't you love me so much? Don't you appreciate how I'm juggling 10 balls? I did this all for you. It took me five years to learn how to juggle 10 balls in a row while I set myself on fire. I'm like pouring lighter fluid on myself. I'm juggling 10 balls in a row while I set myself on fire. And it took me 10 years to learn this trick just so I can impress you. Aren't you impressed that I'm juggling 10 balls in a row? Isn't this so amazing? Don't you love me so much more? The fact that I put in all this effort for you to do all this stuff for you and to make you like me don't you like me anymore don't you can you tell can you tell me that you love me please tell me that you love me i spent so much time juggling these balls and you'd be like brother like take a chill pill like you're embarrassing yourself and you're actually so embarrassing it's rubbing off on me and everyone on the street is staring at us please stop juggling 10 balls and pouring lighter fluid on yourself this is really humiliating for me uh, like, please stop. I'm begging you to please stop. I give you that example because I want you to understand how trying to be more likable is not actually how he's going to like you or fall in love with you more. And that lie, that misconception is what's going to force you to come into a relationship thinking about how you can do more to be more likable. You need to understand that the essence of a man when he desires a woman is that I, I want to prove myself to you that he feels there's an ongoing process to softening you up, to working on you, to getting you interested in him, right? And he actually has to do more and say more and be creative and come up with ideas and put his best foot forward in order for him to be, have you be interested in him. Him. Number five, we're going to discuss the fantasy. The misconception has been that fantasies are more of a function of men's lower extremities rather than a deeper, darker desire. I want you to understand that fantasies actually play an emotional role in a man's ability to fall in love. I know that this sounds weird. The fantasy element of how men are actually falling in love is about the desire to fulfill whatever void was missing in their childhood or developed over time in their adolescence or just in the process of them growing up. Each person's fantasy or K-I-N-K-S is really a combination of who they are and it's much like a fingerprint. And the more you can fulfill or represent that fantasy element, whatever his deepest, darkest fantasies are, the easier it will be to control him. Secondly, the more invested in you he will be 
for sharing those parts of himself with you. 